Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. So we're going to do a full day tonight in this video on this uh, scene here that I shot in Laycock in Wiltshire in England. Uh, so we're going to take this image, rainy day, grey sky, and we're going to uh, turn it into this image. Uh, so, um, so let's get started, full day tonight. So shot in the middle of the day, overcast day, grey sky, uh, been raining and uh, yeah, often we would think that we couldn't really do very much with an image like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a full day tonight trans transformation on this and uh, we're going to do a sky replacement as well and, uh, and, and see where we come out. So let's, um, let's start off here. First thing I always want to do is look at the crop. Uh, and the perspective. So we're going to crop first. I'm going to crop in from the left just to remove that car and I'm going to go to the apex of that uh, building there. Um, I'm going to bring the top down just a little bit, just above the chimney there. Up a little bit just uh, so I'm happy with that crop there. It's going to go to uh, transform just to see where we are with the perspective. I'm going to click auto. No, maybe not. No back maybe i'll go to guided and uh, we will use this this uh, drain pipe here as one and maybe this drain pipe here as another to give us two parallels yeah that's pulling it too far forward so maybe i can adjust that slightly just to move that line oh <laughs> not that much and um there we go and i think that's that that gets where we where we want to be so perspective is good crop is good so we're going to um we're going to jump straight from here into lightroom to to put a sky in here but before just before we do that we're just going to uh bring up the highlights just slightly bring down the shadows a little bit so we create a very defined line along this edge so that uh, photoshop can see uh, very clearly where the sky is so we'll right click we'll edit in and we will edit in adobe photoshop 2022 so this will open up and when, once we're into photoshop we're going to go into edit we're going to go to sky replacement and then we're going to pick a sky that we want to use so it whatever sky is in there initially it, it will will pop into the the sky there but we're going to click the little down arrow to the right of the image here and we can look down through selection of skies that that Lightroom uh, that Photoshop give you um, and if there's nothing there that, that I don't really want to use I can always uh, click on the plus button here the little plus button and that will take me into my library where I keep my my skies so uh, Serge Ramonelli has a really good sky kit that you can you can download for relatively small money um, and also Clever Photographer also has a really good set of skies uh, that you can download so let's have a look we'll go into dramatic skies we'll have a look in there um, you can always select from the top here icons if you're on a Mac of course um, and that will give you the little uh, thumbnails of each of the different skies so you can see which sky uh, could work for you um, so I'm just going to pick one click open and um, and it will put it into this box and then you have to click on it again and then it will add it it will add it to the sky so actually I quite like that one works quite well I'm going to click away from this box in this little gray space here just to get rid of that that uh, dialogue window and then i can start to use some of these sliders just to fine tune the edge there's a little bit of light along the edge there so we can use the fade edge we can slide it uh, to the right which gives us more of a blend so you can see more of a halo there or we can move it to the left and that will take that away um, i think i've also shown in the past that if you go to the refine tool brush here which is the second one down you can actually make your brush larger and you can actually go along the edge just like this to uh, just to make sure that you refine that edge 
So when I let go, it will refine that edge. And the same up here, there we go. So happy with that. Um, you can shift the edge as well. You can use that. You can move that left or right. So again, you can you can create a darker line edge along there if you want to. Um, and then you have a temperature slider. So you can you can make it more blue or, or more yellow by moving the slider. So you can you can change it. Obviously, it's a, it's a very blue sky already to start with. Uh, if I went more blue, it'd be very blue. Um, if I go too far to the right, it will turn the blue into into a magenta. So we just probably just want a little bit on that. Um, there is a flip tick box. If you tick that, it will move the sky from left to right. So in this case, this sky's actually got some lightning in it. We don't want it on on that side. So I'm just going to flip that back so that lightning will go to the right hand side of the image. Now we won't be able to see it. Um, foreground lighting slider that changes. I move that all the way to the left or to the right. You can see the roof there is now very very bright. And if I bring that all the way to the right, it darkens it down, gives it more 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 of a sort of atmospheric um, sh sort of feel to it. So edge lighting as well. Move it to the left, you'll see it will light that edge very brightly. And if I move it to the right, it will darken that down, which looks more more natural. Uh, to be honest, so we go about there and the color adjustment you can adjust the actual main part of the, the image here by moving that left or right you can apply if you if you if you've got a low number it will be the color of the original image and if you go all the way to the right it will apply the color of the sky over 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 the actual uh, image that you had so I'm going to go roughly around there and generally I, I output to uh, new layers but you can have a duplicate layer. Um, but I always combine them together anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to select new layers, click OK, and you'll see that all the layers to create that sky have been created here. Um, now I like to shrink them down to a single layer because they take up a lot of space, otherwise it makes for very, very big images. So I click the top one, I hold down the shift key, click the bottom one, highlight them all. I right click on any of them and I click on merge layers and make it into a single layer so that's that's sorted now whilst we're in photoshop um the photoshop tools for deleting anything are, are exceptional much better than lightroom so i probably want to get rid of this drain here um everything else looks pretty good but i'm going to go to the uh, spot healing brush tool you can click j for that or or click it here it's a little band-aid um, make my brush a little bit bigger by using the square brackets just to the left of the return key and then I'm just going to draw around keeping the thing that I want to remove in 50% of the brush so there's always an overlap around the outside and then it will it will get rid of that very well it's very clever actually um, I'm going to leave the dog bowl in I think that's quite nice there is I'm going to zoom in by holding down the option or alt key and then wheeling the mouse so I can actually zoom in and make my brush a bit smaller. There's some rubbish there, so I'm just going to take that out. And that reflection is a bit uh, a bit much. So that's that's fine. Holding down the space key, I can then use the left mouse key to move around the screen and just have a look at where we're at. So don't particularly like the stickers on the door. So same thing here. I'm going to make my, my mouse quite small. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. I'm going to make it quite small and I'm just going to go around 50% overhang, like I said, and uh, and then filling in, keeping my left finger on the mouse down and it will remove that. Same here, take this sticker out. So 50% overhang and then paint in the center. Got rid of that one. Now maybe let's have a go to see if we can get rid of this uh, this this piece of paper that's in the window. So I'm going to come down there like so. 50% overhang, paint in the center. Yep, that did quite well. And uh, there's a reflection of the car there in that window. So I'm just gonna get rid of that as well. And now let's see if we can get rid of this in one go. I'm gonna come down and try and paint it in. So just painting it in using the heel tool. So making sure that there's nothing left. There we go. 
it's not too bad it's a bit it's a bit light there no it's no good so i'm going to command or control z to undo and i'm going to take the stamp tool the clone stamp tool s and i'm going to take this window here and i'm going to clone it to where that window is there so how to do that to make my 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 uh, mouse brush here a little bit and uh, not too small and i'm going to take a, a corner of this window as my clone and to do that i'm going to hold down the option or alt key i'm going to put my mouse on the corner there and i'm going to click one left click and now it's taken a stamp of that so what you'll see is is that it's taken a copy of that of that window so if i then move that 90 degree corner of that window to the edge of this window hold the mouse down and draw it will duplicate this window over onto this one so i'm just going to come back up there that's pretty good at the bottom there needs touching up so i'm going to take a option or alt on this window center here i'm going to go to that window there line it up and just repaint it back in again so yeah i think that looks pretty good i'm quite happy with that i think maybe maybe we just need to take a clone from this window here so optional alt key click hover over so it lines up and then just paint down there we go yeah there we go now that works really really well so reflection of the car again in this window uh, i think i want to get rid of that as well so i'm going to do the same again hold down the option or alt key click on that corner there move that corner over line it up and then paint that away that's good and the same again on this window i can still use the same clone in fact i'll take another one from this one here on that cross point line that up then just paint that out there we go so that window holding down the space bar so i can move around looks much much better so uh so i'm going to zoom out by holding down the option or alt key and wheeling my mouse so i can get back to where we were anything else that needs repairing here probably just want to take that cable out looks a bit messy so again spot spot healing brush i'm going to make the brush not too big just a bit bigger than the cable itself um i'm just going to pay freehand that first piece down and then i'm going to click once at the top of the cable holding down the shift key i'm going to then click at the bottom and it will draw a straight line with that heel tool to get rid of it so uh, not bad at all just going to tidy that up a little bit there so it looks natural and uh optional alt key to zoom back out wheeling your mouse i think we're in uh, we're in a pretty good position so i'm going to send this back to lightroom so file close save remember don't do file save otherwise you have to recover the image back into lightroom um, and I'm going to go back into Lightroom and uh, the TIFF coming back from Lightroom uh, from Photoshop, sorry, will be will be here. So let's do a fit. That's fine. We'll turn off that data. So there's the image tidied up. Uh, reflections gone. Window looking good. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to, uh, uh, you know, in fact, I would like to to just try to correct that perspective a little bit more so i'm going to go back to guided and i'm going to take the corner of this window make that a straight line and uh, and also this drain pipe down here um, and try and just get that uh, where i want it that's better yeah the bicycle's still in the shot which is good so now day to night we're going to drop the exposure down so it turns it into night time or darkness and remember so i'm coming down quite a bit here about 2.5 stops and then we're going to relight the scene 
okay so we're going to relight starting with the obvious things the lant the lantern is a good place to start um, so i'm going to go to the mask tool here i'm going to select a radial gradient that's and i'm going to make it slightly bigger than the lamp itself there we go and then i'm going to brighten that up 100 percent exposure i'm going to zoom in so we can actually uh, see the lamp a little bit better i'm going to put that in the center where the lamp would be and then remember the trick we're going to just go in a bit closer so i'm going to take that to 200 percent what we're going to do is we're going to whilst in this radial gradient we're going to subtract a brush now the feather needs to be on zero and the flow needs to be on 100 because we're going to remove parts of the radial gradient we don't want and the parts we don't want are the parts that aren't uh, the lamp itself we will relight the wall around this later but for now we're going to remove that so i'm going to click at the bottom here one click and then i'm going to hold down the shift key and click again to remove that gradient along there i'm then going to come across the top i'm going to freehand this across here there we go and then i'm going to click in here and I'm holding down the shift key to get the straight line. I'm going to do the same there and I'll just freehand along the bottom. Now I want to, to remove this as well. So I'm going to make my mouse a little bit smaller, about the same size. Click once, hold down the shift key, line up at the bottom and do the same down there. Now I can make my, my mouse quite a bit larger and uh, my brush. And I can brush around, making sure I do not go over. If you make a mistake and go over like that, um, what you can do is you can effectively just go straight in and command Z to undo your brush stroke. So just gonna come down there like that. There we go. In fact, I think I might have the auto mask on. I do. I'll just turn that off. There we go. And just just repeating that, just going around there. Just uh, the auto mask itself manages uh, the different contrasts. So you, if you select, if you select something with the auto mask on, it will maintain the light from the area that you clicked on as you go through. So if you've got bright coloured leaves against a dark background and you start uh, painting with auto mask on on a bright leaf, it will preserve it will pres preserve the dark background. Um, but it will it will change only the leaves because of the contrast. So so it's important that if you're doing a blanket removal of light like we are here, you turn the auto mask off. Now, as I said earlier, if you make a mistake and you cross over, whoops, you know, you, you, you went in there. Just control or command Z to undo it and you can go back. So we've we've removed the light. I'm just going to zoom out slightly to 100 percent and just make sure we've got rid of all extraneous light which we have now we can right click on this and we can duplicate the mask okay and in duplicating the mask you preserve the um the subtraction of the brush that you've already made so this just means we've now got double brightness but what i can and what i'm going to do with the second one is i'm going to make it smaller uh, and make it look like the actual lamp inside the fitting yeah there we go so just click done so you can see so it gives you that sort of natural looking effect that there's actually a light bulb in there now this needs to be made brighter but i'm not going to brighten it just yet because i'm going to have a radial filter coming over the whole thing um, just to light up the wall uh, and the areas around it so i go back into mask i'm going to create a new mask and a radial gradient and i'm going to take a mask turn it so it's the angle of the wall that the light would light at and uh, just spread that out slightly like that now i'm going to start to raise that that brightness up and we're going to add a little bit of yellow not a lot just a little bit of yellow um, just to light that area right now, a bit brighter there we go now you might say well well now we're blown out on the lamp but of course we can go back in the masks and select the previous ones and turn them down a little bit so go back to mask one 
and turn it down a little bit. So you can get back to where you want to be in terms of the brightness while maintaining this this outer area that you've you've got here. Now it's important to note this lamp this lantern would not light upwards. It's, it's very much a a ridge here. So the top of this lantern and the space around here would not be would not be illuminated. So we need to go back to mask three, the big mask, subtract a radial gradient. Sorry, apologies. Uh, let me delete that. Uh, subtract. Sorry, I need to not subtract a radial gradient. So this is the one I need to remove that one by pressing escape and then whilst I'm in the gradient radial gradient subtract a brush is what I need to do and um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to brush a shadow in here now we can't use the brush as it stands at the moment with feather at zero flow at 100 because we'll just get a black line and it doesn't look very natural command z control z will undo that um, so instead what we're going to do is subtract a brush we're going to put the feather at 100 percent and the flow at 50 percent and then we're going to paint away so effectively you can you can click once and use the shift to get a, a line coming away from it uh, click and what we can do is we can create a darker area we can paint that in there i might increase the flow and bring the feather down a little bit when i'm getting close to the lantern there we go We can just, uh, if you want to see you, the mask, you just hover over the mask over here, and you can see where you, where you haven't been. So uh, hover over, you can see where we haven't been. So you've got this sort of darker area now, which is above. So that's looking pretty good. Um, if we wanted to bring this light down a bit further, we can always go back into the radial gradient and pull it down more so we could light this sign up a little bit more. Um, and then we can always go um, back into um, to the brush that we were using to subtract um, and just make sure that we've got everything's gone from up here. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to zoom zoom out from there. Let's go back to the full shot. So now you can see, oh, I've just done that for now. You can see the lantern is illuminated and it's lighting the wall and uh, and the sign. In fact, I think the, the overall image is still too bright. So I can take that down to uh, maybe minus 3.5 stops. Um, and then we can go back into masks, select mask 2. And uh, we can increase the brightness on mask two. Not a problem at all. We can make it a little bit bigger again. So it's lighting up the wall. Again, hovering over, you can see I now need to remove uh, the mask from above. So we go back into the brush that's already there. Uh, we make the flow 100. And we're just going to paint the rest of that out up there. Now it's important that this light would, would cast on this corner here. This would cast a shadow down here. So we do need to create a little bit of a shadow on this edge. So putting the feather up quite high, uh, flow about 70. We're just going to click once at the top, holding down the shift key, clicking again, just a little bit bigger and do it again. And you create this little shadow on this corner. It's very effective. So now we've uh, illuminated the wall. I'm going to go back in, create a new radial gradient. And I'm going to pull one out on the floor underneath this lamp lantern. And I'm going to see, you'll notice, oops, I didn't mean to open the center. You'll notice that uh, I'm going to place it directly under the lamp, like so. And I'm going to turn it so that the angle of the light is roughly equal to the angle of the radio. I'm just going to open that up a little bit more, like so. In fact, I'm going to bring that back a little bit like that. And then I'm going to start to raise the exposure. OK, so I've raised it pretty well all the way to the top. Looks pretty good. I'm going to stretch it out just a bit further so the street light would light out into the road. Um, that's looking pretty good. It's going to come a little bit more this way. 
There we go. So that gives us the effect a little bit of a uh, little bit of yellow just just to balance colors not too much that gives us the effect that the light is actually lighting down onto the road uh, the lantern is lighting down onto the road now i think we'd get a little bit more light to the right so whilst we're in this radial gradient we can add a brush uh, put the feather high and flow quite low make a brush quite big and just paint away from there just to bring a little bit more light over here Picking up this bicycle and the sign on the bicycle so that it's being illuminated by by the uh, by the lantern itself. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I might even just stroke a bit more light away over here just to give it. So we're adding more light effectively as we go over there. That looks pretty good indeed. Now there would be some light on this wall here. This lantern would light down there. So still using this add brush. With 100% feather and quite a low flow, just going to make a couple of passes just to build up the brightness on this bit of wall here. There we go. So it's illuminated that little bit of the wall. Top of the bench, I could do with a little bit as well. Now around the wall here, the light wouldn't light down onto this bit of wall. It would pick up the flowers, but it wouldn't pick up the wall. So we're going to go back to the radial. We're going to subtract a brush. Uh, we're going to have a high feather, low flow, and we're just going to paint around that area where it's too bright and just darken that down just a little bit. So I'm just clicking there just to, and that this roof would cast a bit of a shadow as well. So we're just going to darken this down just a little bit here. There we go. And the same here as well. It's a bit bright. Make the brush bigger. There we go. So we're just trying to get that natural flow of light there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to light the bakery itself. So I'm going to go back into masks, create a new radial gradient, nice big one. Now the center of this gradient needs to be where the light bulb would be in the room. So you've got to think about where the light bulb would be in that room. Most people just stick the radial gradient in the center of the window. Trust me, that doesn't look natural and it can be spotted very quickly. Whereas if you put it up towards the ceiling, for example, and we'll add a light bulb in here shortly, the light's coming from the light source. So it'll be lighting the room as such. So I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna brighten up 100% there. And you can see there's there's like some drapes or some curtains behind. So we, we and, and that, there's a sort of blind at the front. So we want to bring the lamp down a little bit so we would actually see it. So we're going to bring it down to about there. And we're at 100% exposure. So as bright as we can go. So could add a little bit of highlight as well. And I'm definitely going to add some colour just to make out that we've got a bit of a, a yellowish light with a little bit of magenta. So it doesn't look at all natural at the moment. But the key here is, is to use our subtraction of a brush. So subtract a brush we're going to go to 100 percent flow we're going to go to zero feather because we want a nice hard edge to this window i'm going to zoom in on this window so let's go in here it may be a bit close yes it is let's go to 100 percent now i want to paint out this radial gradient uh, so that only the room inside is effectively uh, illuminated so i'm just going to click here one click i'm going to go to here hold down the shift click again Hold down the shift click again, go to the edge of the window here and uh, edge of the window here, click. And so I'm just effectively using uh, the subtraction brush to take the light away. I'm going to go the same on this side. Now, it's really important that w where there, there might be some light, particularly on the edges of these window uh, frames, we will blend those so we don't have a really hard edge by using a slightly lower flow in a little while. But for now, I'm just going to go around. Like this windowsill, for example, would have light coming onto it from inside the room. So just going to go around the windowsill at the low level there and just take out the light from there. Now we want a hard line down the center of these panes. So I'm just going to take a small brush, click, go halfway click that's not very good so you can always undo that with command or control z 
try again by lining up a little bit better that's, that's nice and straight these window frames are not straight so you have to compensate for them as you come down so just going to do the same here so you can see I'm painting out this radial gradient by using the subtraction brush where we wouldn't get light which is just on the outside of these these frames so you can see moving quite quickly you can that one looks pretty straight so hopefully we can get that in one go yep you can get quite a nice straight line i'm going to make this one slightly bigger using the square brackets next to the return key there we go i'm going to go back to a slightly smaller one for this one and just taking out the frame using the shift key to give that straight line each time i'm going to do the same across here should be able to do that in one hit yep there we go and clicking there holding down the shift key so one click hold down the shift key second click get those window frames done so it's important that they are symmetrical um, as best as you can now I'm going to blacken out this bottom line as well here so I'm going to take a slightly bigger brush here and we're just going to come into there and I'm going to go along the bottom here and along the bottom here so this window ledge will light up slightly differently but that that's the window frame is, itself now this is the real trick within the brush that we're in we reduce the flow to 50 percent and we add 10 percent feather and we make our brush slightly bigger so it needs to be about the size of the uh the window frame itself so then you do the same again so click hold shift click hold shift click and what we can do is we can start to blend those edges so we do a quick first pass with 50% flow that one's nice and straight so you can do that in one same with that one now it still looks like quite a hard edge so what we're going to do is we're going to do a second pass at 50 percent so i'm just going to come across here that brush a little bit smaller and then um we're going to make the brush slightly smaller again and just do the edges with a 50% pass so effectively I'm just catching the edges of the panes with the 50% uh, flow and it what it does is it just takes the sharp edge off the uh, the first line the first subtraction that we did uh, and this is what makes it look natural as we're uh, as we're blending those edges in just got a couple more quickly to do there and this one here and uh, the blending is really what makes it makes it um look natural it's the real it's the real trick to it so you are still going to have a little bit of light you can see it coming through from the window but we've still got a very bright edge along the top of this window so i'm just going to just soften that again with this 50 percent flow brush just tiny little brush just taking the very top of that window and just darkening it down ever so slightly 
Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Now this bottom windowsill needs to be uh, done the same. So 50% is still fine for that. We'll make the brush slightly bigger so that we can just paint over that that edge. So we've, we've done a 50% pass. Now we make a small brush and we go over the actual line edge just to soften that line edge. There we go. Yep, that looks pretty good. So now if we if we brighten the window more, uh, we will effectively um, only light the inside uh, of the shop. Uh, so uh, just finishing that off, that looks pretty good. Just going to do that bottom edge there, it's quite bright. And just take out that one there, there we go. So I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to take the rest of the radial gradient away. So I move my flow back up to 100%, bring my feather down to zero. I must not paint over what we've done. So I'm just going to go around, use click, hold, shift, click, click, hold, shift, click, just to go around the edge that I painted originally. And then bigger still, just to make sure that we get all of the last parts of that bakery. So hover over the mask will show, it's a little bit there, look, um, that it's just the window that's being illuminated now. So maybe we want to make that brighter. Well, we're already at 100% on, on the uh, exposure. We can push up the highlights if we want to. What I prefer to do is, um, is to duplicate. So right click, duplicate the mask. So we get two on top of each other. Of course, now it's too bright. But what we can do is we can back the top one down to a point at which we are happy with the brightness. So uh, we'll make them a bit brighter. What you can do is add a bit of contrast, a little bit of contrast. And one that really makes it pop is bringing in clarity because artificial light uh, has a really high contrast, very, very clarity. So I can just pop that in. The more you do, the more you can see how much of an effect you can have. So, so that looks pretty good. It looks very bright on this right hand side because of this, this this white panel here so i i can do the same as we did before by going to my brush on a 50 percent flow with 100 percent feather and i can click and um holding down the shift key just gradually apply more and more um to that i can go to the first mask as well and do the same thing go back to the brush and I can just bring in a pass that as you can see just darkens that down a little bit more there so it looks like the lights coming from within inside and I'm just going to do a little pass along the top there we go so so that's that's the light in the shop illuminated looks really quite good actually um, what I will do is on that radial gradient, I'm going to add a brush and I'm just going to um, flow rates quite low. Feathers, I'm just going to add a little bit more light outside the shop on that bike. There we go. So it'd be good to light this window over here as well. Um, so we would do the same thing, create a mask, radial gradient. We will put the radial gradient with the light to one side and a little bit bigger. Just going to zoom in on that. There we go. I'm going to bring up, bring up the brightness, a bit of highlight, a little bit of clarity, and I'm going to subtract radial gradient. Sorry, I'm going to escape that. Subtract a brush, um, feather at zero, flow at a hundred percent. Just going to zoom in a bit more. So I'm just going to do this one as I just did. I'm going to speed up the video so that you can see uh, how I do this one the same way as I just did the last one. OK.
Okay, so I've just colored those frames in. I'm just going to go back up to 100% and feather down to zero just to take away the remainder of this radial gradient round here. I'm going to zoom out all the way and take the rest of it out. We go hover over, just check, yeah, a little tiny bit there. Remember to change your brush size, just wheelie your mouse. Um, so that window is now done. So I'm going to duplicate the mask so we can double the brightness. And we're going to bring the brightness down on the second one. So it's not too bright. Uh, add a little bit of clarity in there, there we go. Now this one would, would have a little bit of light outside the window. So either we could use a radial gradient or Whilst we're in this mask, we can add a brush, select 50% flow, 100% feather, and we could just pick up a little bit more light outside the window like that. Looks looks pretty good. Yep, happy with that. So uh, now normally I would have the time to do more windows, uh, maybe a bit further down, down the street. I think what I will do is just do this one upstairs so we can see that one done as well. So again, I'll do that straightforward, go into a mask, select a radial gradient, take a radial gradient, move the light to a certain position like so, increase the brightness, subtract a brush, I'm gonna zoom in on this window, there we go. And the same thing, I'm gonna just bring my feather down to zero a little bit further this time um, flow at 100 and I'm just going to go around the window again as I've been doing just taking out the uh, the radial gradient where I don't want it there we go So we just click, shift, click to get that straight line. Click, shift, click, click, shift, click. Holding down the shift on the second click to get that nice straight, straight line along the edge of the window. This time I'm not going to do quite so much blending. I'm just going to run with quite a hard edge. As you will see, gives you quite an interesting effect as well. So, I'm paint that out. Bigger brush. Click, shift, click. Click, shift, click. Making sure you don't go over the window. As we go around, I'm just going to zoom out. Check the rest of that. Big brush. Take away the rest of that. Uh, we go now. I'm going to add a bit of colour to this one, just so it looks quite natural. There is quite a hard line along the top edge of the window, so I'm just going to zoom back in again. Oops, made a mistake. So Command or Control Z to undo. I'm I've, I'm still on the brush. So what I'm going to do is reduce the flow to fifty. Bring the feather up. Take a very small brush along that along that edge. And just same technique, shift click and gradually work that edge down just by passing it a few times. Um, same on this one here, it's quite a bright edge. You can see I'm just gradually taking away that hard edge by going over it a few times with the 50% removal just to uh, soften those those edges up just a little bit. And I'm gonna make the brush even smaller and just gonna, one size bigger, just, just go right on that line, there we go. That's good.
so come back out there we go and uh, as you can see that window is now illuminated now if we want to make it a bit brighter we can increase the uh, the highlights slightly um, but what I think we should do is we should drop the highlights down just a little bit and we should add a uh, duplicate sorry the mask again but this time when we do it we're just going to make it the size of a light bulb in that in that area there so if I click done now it's too bright so we just go back to that last last one there and we just bring that down a little bit there we go looks like we have a light bulb in that room in fact it probably could be a bit smaller so I'm just going to zoom in shift to move click on that. I'm just going to bring it down to a smaller one there we go perfect so now we have a light bulb in that room and it's illuminated so um, and the very last thing I'm probably going to do here is going to light this doorway uh, so again I'm just going to zoom in here just so you can see this doorway is quite dark so what we could do is we could mimic that there is a light up underneath this porch to light this and how we can do that is we go back create a mask radial gradient we we bring some light coming down and we place where the light bulb would be so it's behind it's underneath this porch we're going to raise the the light level up we're going to open the shadows as well because it's quite dark under there yeah so and in fact i'm probably gonna just add a little bit of clarity in there and bring a bit of white up as well so it's got quite a quite a bright actually in fact we'll bring the shadows up but we'll keep the shadows down because we can duplicate this in a minute so we're going to subtract a brush okay feather is going to be about 20 percent, maybe 10 percent, just uh just so we don't get a sharp sharp edge and i'm just going to do the same thing click hold down the shift and click along where the porch line is you see just going to go slightly lower that's it and then just paint the top piece out there so the lights looking like it's coming from underneath we'll do the rest of that in a moment just going to move up bigger brush and just take away the rest of that uh, radial gradient there zoom out check it's clear yep so you can see that the the mask is just under the porch so we've taken away from above there's a little bit there on the edge i'd like to get rid of just want to come down there so still not bright enough so what do we do we click on it we right click and we duplicate the mask so we create more light under there now it's very bright so we can just bring that down a little bit add a little bit of yellow to it just a little bit bring it down just not too not too much and um, we can add a brush now as well feather high flow quite low and just put a bit more light around here too much control z to undo that um, add the brush again uh, reduce the flow and just just pick up the top of those flowers as though the lights playing onto the top of those flowers and around the door there we go and the door is illuminated so uh that's pretty good as i say i normally would go down the road there i'm going to recrop this so that we're really only looking at the area that we're interested in i'm going to put the lantern on the rule of thirds there um just going to bring that in there just like that's got works quite well i'm going to accept that so uh there we go there's our bakery full day tonight illuminated hope you enjoyed that if you've got any questions uh, or comments feel free to comment in the comments below i would appreciate a like uh, and a subscription would be wonderful so uh, until the next video see you soon